Uh, greeting everyone. I am Dr. Deependra from Conceptual Orthopedic, and I welcome you all in today's connect session with Vandana Ma'am. And today, Ma'am is going to uh, talk about how to rehab uh, after total hip replacement patient. So, I think this talk is going to be very useful to all of you. So, without any more delay, I welcome you, Ma'am, on the board, and I request you to start a presentation. Now, it's over to you, Vandana Ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Deependra. So, this is again one of the very relevant topics for most therapists and surgeons because it's such a commonly done procedure. We talked about the rehab after total knee replacement and then comes total hip replacement, of course, which is one of the more common surgeries performed. So let's see what rehabilitation um, goals and principles do we have for that. And especially I think THR is done generally unilaterally as compared to TKR. So it just gives us more freedom as the volume is less. Maybe I'll just talk louder. I think it just allows us to use the unoperated side better because bilateral THRs are still uh, not commonly done. Bilateral TKRs are commonly done. So let's start. So we'll first in the lecture talk about various considerations which are relevant for a therapist to know, such as whether it's a cement fixation or what is the incision. So we'll talk about those things first before we start talking about the exercises that we do every phase. So uh, everybody knows that there are two types of fixations that you do as surgeons. There is either a cementless fixation or a cemented fixation. And uh, the choice is different for both of them. The cemented ones give you a freedom to make the patient mobile much early. Whereas the cementless is done, which has that porous coating, <laughs> which allows only in-growth, but that means that weight-bearing has to be delayed, whereas weight-bearing is much earlier with a cemented fixation. But with cemented ones, there is possibility of loosening, which happens uh, if the patient is physically very active or a young patient. So I think cemented ones are preferred if the patient is less physically active or is generally an older patient. So again, just talking about this again, that cement fixation is done for patients um, either with who have osteoporosis in which bony growth in growth is not going to be strong or they're going to be elderly patients. In contrast, cementless is more often the choice for patients under 60 who are physically active and who have a better bone quality. The approach, is, the more common approach, the standard approach, and the minimally invasive one, which is picking up. Um, this is important for the therapist to know because it tells us how many muscles are incised. And the muscles which are incised are going to be weaker. So those are the muscles which we want to target to strengthen. So we would want to know apart from the details of whatever prosthesis you use, um, what approach has been used because what, how much soft tissue has been cut around it. And the most common approach is, of course, the posterior lateral approach that I see with my patients. Uh, but then there are other approaches like the direct lateral, the anterior lateral ones, which are also used. These are just pictures of that. The first one over here is the anterior lateral approach, which is possibly one of the most stable ones which has the least chances of subluxations or dislocations post-operatively. Whereas compared to the posterior lateral ones, this is the posterior lateral in which the advantage is that the gluteus maximus is not completely incised, but it's sliced along the fibers and the lateral gluteus medius and tensor facial lata is completely intact. So as soon as the lateral abductor mechanism is intact, it adds to a lot of stability and helps in rehabilitation post-op. But if the gluteus medius is compromised, like in this condition, in the lateral approach, and the gluteus medius is weak, and the patient has to go through more strenuous rehab to strengthen this medius to avoid any Trendelenburg type of gait pattern later on. If um, it is a revision or that kind of, I think, then I believe, Anterolateral is generally preferred by the surgeon, but usually a posterolateral approach is the commoner one. 
the minimally invasive ones are getting popular with because the incision sites are smaller less soft tissue trauma is there um uh, maybe it attached to shorter hospital stay and stuff like that and then there are three approaches to a minimally invasive one as well the posterior anterior and lateral um i'll talk more commonly done techniques of the posterior lateral standard technique and the rehab of that the minimally invasive ones are technically more challenging for the surgeon it helps my job easier as a therapist but it i think is more challenging for the surgeon so let's talk about the post op let's talk about the broad categories of what precautions do the patients need to take because i think whatever surgeon tells and the therapist reinforces and the nursing staff reinforces is what gets followed so i think we should all be on the same page on what precautions need to be taken the immobilization after a total hip arthroplasty there is no need for a strict immobilization on the operated side right you allow early movement to happen the only movements which are restricted in the resting period is that the hip should not go into adduction beyond neutral and it should be in neutral rotation so things like internal rotation and adduction movements which will cause that hip to come out of the socket adduction internal rotation we should be avoided uh even in the resting phase even while doing passive movements early on or allowing the patient to do active movements you would want to avoid adduction and rotation while the, in the early stages so what is recommended is that the patients use an abduction pillow so that the limbs are kept slightly wide apart they are not allowed to touch each other which allows for more stability and prevents any post op complications of loosening or dislocations the weight bearing considerations depend upon whether it is a cemented or a cementless if it is a cemented and immediate post op weight bearing as tolerated is allowed whereas if it's of a cementless or a hybrid type of a prosthesis that is used then we go for a partial weight bearing for the at least the first 6 weeks and then progress on to full weight bearing after surgery against if it is standard versus minimally invasive comparison then weight bearing is usually more restricted in the standard approach more soft tissue trauma is there you would allow more time to heal and if it's a minimally invasive approach then weight bearing is allowed or tolerated much better it is done immediately after surgery if in some chances that the trochanteric osteotomy is also done in combined then you know have to allow bone healing to happen so of course weight bearing will have to be restricted for 6 to 8 weeks maybe up to 12 to 16 weeks for bony union to happen um and these are some rare things that we should know that if you used a bone graft then again we're going for non weight bearing allowing the bone to heal or if there are other conditions like very poor quality of the patient's bone or something which the surgeon believes any condition which could jeopardize the stability of the prosthetic implant weight bearing can be delayed but in an usual case if the patient is had a cemented prosthesis even with the standard procedure not a min minimally invasive one weight bearing is tolerated is initiated pretty much immediately after um surgery as tolerated potential benefits of course are that uh, i mean all benefits of weight bearing are there as soon as the patient is mobile all peripheral vascular complications respiratory complications are going to be reduced your bony demineralization is going to be reduced all of those things so what um, as soon as we talk of weight bearing we're going to talk about progression from a walker to cane to crutches right and one of the commonest question that is asked whenever we talk of any hip arthroplasty or any hip pain or anything is that why is the cane used on the opposite side whenever we're talking of hip pathology 